Hi, I'm Kyle Farley with the AMPM Guide Service, and I'm here with Jocelyn Lung with Angling Outfitters here in Woodstock, Ontario. Today, we're going to do a seminar on how to set up the Elite TI and the Elite TI 2s. All right, guys, here we are setting up the Elite TI or TI 2. This would be an Elite TI 2. The factory settings of these units are horrid at best. I shall give you a little quick story. A few years back, I was fishing the FLW Open on Lake Okeechobee as a co-angler. And in my stay at the tournament, I updated and programmed nine different pros units. And it's pretty scary when many of the US pros use their units on a daily basis and don't have anything set up. So what we'd like to teach people is how to set up their units. So let's start setting up this unit. The first thing we're going to do is hit the page button. We're going to go to the chart screen. I'm going to touch the chart screen because we want to program the chart. First thing we're going to do is set the orientation. To, so to set the orientation, we hit the more options button. We go to orientation. Heading up is same as your car, which means the map moves. You stay in the middle of the screen, but I don't want to stay in the middle of the screen. So I hit the back button and I hit the look ahead. When you hit the look ahead, it locks you on the bottom of the screen so you don't drive off the screen. So heading up is a nice, comfortable screen to put yourself on. Many of you are more competitive in your application of the unit. If you're running a lot up and down the lake, we're going to zoom into the lake. As we zoom into the lake, we're going to turn on some features. The first feature we're going to do is hit the page button. We're going to go to the gear button on the top left of the screen. We're going to go to chart. We're going to turn on the heading extension. We're going to set it to one mile and we press exit. It draws a bar in front of the boat. So as you're zooming in or out, you know what is one mile ahead or in between by looking at the heading extension. That's a very nice feature when you're running. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is customize each and every screen. The data that Lawrence gives you on the base screen of mapping is unacceptable. So we hit the power button. We go to edit overlay, we go to add, we, we put our course over ground, which tells you what degree heading your boat is heading in. We go to your sonar, because I'd like to know my depth on my map screen. So I go to depth, I go up to time, because I need to know the way in time, which is time. And I'd like to know the battery level, especially if you have many different units and you fish long periods of time because if you drop below a certain voltage, your alarm should go off, which I'm going to explain right now. So right now I put my speed, my course, my depth, my time, my voltage. I put my finger on the screen and I move the voltage to the bottom of the screen and across to the right. I'll explain why in a moment. I take my depth and I move it across and I make it bigger by hitting the positive button. I put my course over here, I put my speed over here and I make it bigger. So right now I have all the information I need to see and I put it on the screen. I believe there's over 60 overlays that you can put on any screen. These are the pertinent ones for boating. I save it. So the voltage alarm that we mentioned earlier, we're going to now try to set up. I hit the page button. I go to the alarms. I, I go to settings and I slide the toolbar upwards. When I get to voltage, it's on. So I touch the toolbar, high voltage, I can leave it there, low voltage. Most Optimax's E-Tex and four stroke motors will need 11 volts to turn it over. So once it hits 11 volts, the alarm shall go off if you set it at 11. Okay guys, now we're gonna program the fish finder. So I hit the page button. I go to my gear button, uh, sonar button. There's my fish finder. The fish finder settings on most Lawrence products are horrid for your application. So these are smart units, but they're not as smart as the consumer, which is going to be using it, that being you. I hit the page button. I hit the gear button. I go to sonar. I need to tell the unit what I have connected to it. So the transducer type in many of these units would be the total scan transducer, which is the side scan with the down scan. So we slide the toolbar up and typically it's MH unless you have a saltwater one, which would be the LH. But we're going to start with the MH transducer. So now I've told the unit, this is a transducer I'm plugging into it. 
If you're not sure, your transducer has a silver sticker approximately one and a half inches from the plug-in and it has a code on it and that's the code you would type in. So I would save the transducer on it. Now, mode. In Lorenz talk, general means over 100 feet of water. So most bass fishermen and most people fishing on Lake Erie would set it to shallow water. So shallow water means I've set up the unit to fish less than 100 feet of water. Back. Now I'm going to fine tune the unit. I press the advanced feature and I turn off the top filter because I don't want the noise on top. I want more information on the bottom. So I don't want to see what's on top in this application. Turn off the top filter, turn up the scroll speed to three, which is two positive settings, 10%. So typically that's th three times quicker in the scroll rate. That tells you more information in a quicker period of time. Exit once, back again. We go to the regular options. Palette number 13, which is white with bottom tracking, is our most popular setting if you're not colorblind. If you're colorblind, most of our consumers will go to color number 8. So color number 13 is for people that have normal eyesight that can see most color. Color number 13 will show you the hardness of the bottom being darker and the softer of the bottom being lighter. More importantly, it'll show you better details such as fish sitting on the bottom or other organic matter sitting on the bottom. So color number 13 is a nice color to pick from. And now we're going to turn on the amplitude scope so we can see in real time what the boat's doing, especially at high speed. So this is a faster refresh rate. I go back and now I've got to put information. I troll a lot on the fish finder screen, but this screen's not telling me the information I need to see. Because if I'm trolling, I'd like to know my bearing so I could keep the boat straight. I definitely want to know how fast I'm trolling. So I hit the power button. I go to edit overlay. I touch the overlay and I go touch the add button. So I slide the toolbar to the top. I go to GPS. I go course so I can keep the boat straight. I go to speed so I know how fast I'm trolling. I go to time, which is most important if you fish competitively. So you know what weigh in time is or what time you got to get home for dinner. And then I go to other, and that's going to tell me my volt voltage. So right now we've already set our volt alarm. I move the screen. I move the voltage here. I move the speed over here and I make it bigger by pressing the positive button. I make the depth bigger so I can see it. And I leave the course in the center. So if I'm trolling lead core dipsies, I can keep the boat straight. I save everything. That's my customized screen for sonar. Now I'm going to create a... Now, the settings on the Lorentz toolbars that are quick keys, they're not set up for most competitive fishermen. So we're going to get rid of some of these quick keys and create our own quick keys. So I put my finger on the quick key. I press the exit button, exit button, exit button. Now I create my own screens. So I create a screen. My first screen I'm going to create is sonar and downscan. So you just drag the box over and then you save it. Now, because I've created a screen, there is no information on the screen. I hit the power button. I go to edit overlay. I go to add. I start with the depth, which is under sonar. So I hit the sonar toolbar. I go to depth. There's your depth. I slide it up to GPS. I want my compass heading, I want my speed, I want my weigh-in time, and I want my voltmeter, because we have a volt alarm on our voltmeter. I move the voltage down here, I move the speed over here, I make it bigger, I move my compass heading, and I move my depth bigger. So now I can keep my lead core straight, or I can troll or stroll a body bait in a bass tournament. So I got to keep that code, that heading there. Hit the page button. We're going to create a very important screen that they don't have on quick keys. We're creating a page. We want down scan and we want sonar. Now, these toolbars are very friendly. If I move it this way, then I have side scan on this side, down scan on this side. But I would like to have side scan on the right because that's easier for me to co comprehend. I save it. I hit the power button. I want a larger side scan screen, a smaller down scan. I hit the split. I save it. 
So now I have the down scan, which is from here to here. Now I have the side scan. I hit the power button. I go to edit overlay. I go to add. I always start with my depth because if I start with my depth, I don't have to move the overlays around as much. Here's my depth. Go back up to GPS. Here's my course. Go down to speed. Go down to time. And once again, the voltage alarm, which is under other. There's approximately 65 to 70 overlays that you can put on the screen. These are generally the ones that we put on most of the screens. Move the speed, make it bigger. Whoops. Move the compass heading and make your depth bigger. So this screen is friendly for your application. Now, let's talk about downscan. The Lorentz downscan is called Fish Reveal and it is an incredible system. Typically, what the factory settings seems to be on the brown setting. And we find that the lighter blue, which is palette number one, is a little bit clearer for most of our consumers' eyes. Some will go to color number nine, but we find the brightness of the number one on the palette seems to be a nice mix of colors so you pick up the image. Now, which brings us to the next thing. When we had the down scan with the sonar, I touched the sonar screen. You'll have to excuse the unit. They're on simulation mode, so they keep cutting out back to factory yucky settings. So we're just gonna keep putting it back. This now shows you 3D versus 2D. This is clearly showing you that there's weed clumps and small weeds, and that's how you define the detail. When you see the sonar beside the down scan, the down scan will show you each individual weed or branches or brush piles, and it's a very clear view. So it's very important to put the screens beside each other so you understand what you're looking at, okay? Now we're going to create some neat screens and show you how to fine tune the neat screens. So many of our consumers will want more detail put on the screen. So we're gonna play with it on a three screen setup. We go to chart, we go to sonar, we go to down scan. Now, on the top, there's another toolbar that allows you to change the settings. I prefer the vertical screens, but you can go horizontal, vertical, whatever you feel like it. So I'm gonna use show you the vertical screen. You pick whatever you, works better for you. We've created a screen, so you have to do your overlays again. But watch this, I hit the power button, and we can make things bigger or smaller. We want a bigger down scan, and we want a smaller sonar. We save it. Sonar, bigger map, bigger down scan. So that's a screen that you've created, and once again, you have to do your data, that, because when you create a screen, there's no data on your screen. Hit the power button, hit the edit, go to add, start with your depth again. So we go down to depth, go back to GPS, compass heading, speed, time, and voltmeter. So we have all our information on the screen. And once again, you move it around, make it bigger so you can see it, move it around, and move it around. So that's the screen. Now, one neat feature is on all Touch Lorance products, you can slide the toolbar away. So when you're actually fishing, and you don't need to see all the tools, you get larger screens overall. So if I'm on my split, side scan, down scan screen. So on our split screen, we grab the toolbar and slide it over. So we have down scan and a bigger side scan. When using the side scan on a touch unit, if I see some rocks here, I touch the screen, I touch the screen, I zoom in, and it shows you clearly the rock better. Most of our consumers that save a waypoint do a horrid job of it. We have a rock here and we have a couple of fish past it. So we're gonna to touch the rock pile. We're gonna hit the flag button. And instead of saving a silly blue dot, we touch the waypoint button. We're gonna put a rock pile because that's a rock pile. We're gonna save it. So when I save a rock pile there, when I go back to the map screen and I zoom into the map screen, I know that rock is behind me left because it's gonna show you the rock. And when you look at a unit that's a couple seasons old and everyone saves blue dots, it's ridiculous because is it a rock pile? Is it a weed line? Is it a log? You should mark each one as a symbol. It doesn't take any time, but it saves your 
in the future when you're fishing because if the rock piles are on, hit all the rock piles. If the logs are on, hit all the logs. So use your waypoint smartly. Another great feature of a Lorentz is when you save a waypoint, such as a rock, I'm gonna zoom into the rock I just saved. So I'm not sure which rock it was, but we'll just number 22. So we pick waypoint number 22, we press enter, we go to edit. Every waypoint you save will tell you the date, the time, and the depth. It's a log and it's very important. So if you save a thousand blue dots and a third of them are logs, a third of them are weed lines, a third of them are rocks. I should hope you to have a rock, log, and, and weed line symbol. Because once you look at the time and dates, you'll know that it's an early spring spot, summer spot, fall spot. You'll know if it's early in the morning, middle of the day, or late at night. So always save a waypoint. Spend a bit of time saving your waypoints properly. Okay, so that's how you... Now, let's talk about Navionics. We have an active Navionics card that came with this unit and it has been loaded by us through the Navionics chart installer. So we go to more options, we go to chart options and we turn on Navionics. So we've got a, the simulator keeps kicking kick in folks. So we just turn on the Navionics. We're going to go to our area where we loaded the card. So we zoom out and we go to Lake St. Clair because I have the card loaded where we boat. So we go over to Lake St. Clair the Navionics uh, platform is an excellent platform because you load the area that you'd like to boat in. And we are boating in southern Ontario, southwestern Ontario. So typically we fish a lot of Lake St. Clair. So because of that, we've loaded that area that we boat in. Now, all Navionics card comes with a base file and a good file. So right now we're fishing off XC2 and this is the base map, which is the yucky data. So right now we've got 11 foot hole and a six foot hump. We go to more options and we turn on the better Navionics card. So we go chart data, turn off the shading. We don't have shading and turn on the sonar charts. Sonar charts are data that's scanned by consumers that send back the data that is updated daily. So this is the better data. Now we have a safety feature. We set the safety feature at six feet. Anything less than six feet is blue, so you won't beat your boat or damage your boat. If you're catching fish at a certain depth, you can set the range. So I've turned on the safety depth at six. This is an in simulation mode. If I was actually boating, I can go to shallow water and set that number and it puts a red dotted line. So if my magic depth today was say 11 feet of water, if I set the shallow water at 11 feet, it'll draw a red line, a red dotted line to 11 feet and you follow that red line. So that's a nice feature on the Navionics. Now, because I have an active Navionics card, if I hit the page button, I can go to the map with sonar screen. I go back, I go back, and I go to overlay. If you have an active Navionics card, once you hit the sonar chart live, it actually will update your Navionics file. And if you watch the YouTube video on how to do it, it'll allow you to update through your Wi-Fi, through your data of your cell phone, or through your internet at home once your unit picks up some, some way of connecting to the internet. So Sonar Chart Live is a platform that Navionics and Lorentz created together to update the Navionics every time you go boating. It's a nice feature. Uh, watch the YouTube videos on how to do that. I hope you enjoyed the video today and I hope you learned a lot regarding the Elite and Elite TI and Elite TI2. We did quite a bit of editing because my dog Feeny here enjoys barking. If you like the video, please click the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to contact us at Angling Outfitters, Woodstock, Ontario. Thank you very much.